Get ready for one more sale. Inspiring you with ideas through powerful and engaging interviews with top performers of their field. Now, join us as we discuss techniques and strategies of the coolest and most successful people on the planet. Check out our sponsors, Direct Mortgage Loans. Listen, these guys are committed. They provide outstanding service. I know personally because I work with them. They are also licensed in 22 states, so make sure you check them out and see if they can do work with you. Listen, they not only will take amazing care of your clients, they're based on building lifelong relationships with our buyers, our sellers, as well as us as realtors. They're looking for partners, and they're providing the best resources, training, and knowledge the industry has to offer. So if you're interested in partnering up with somebody that's really innovative, check them out. Their website is directmortgageloans.com, or you can reach them at 888 604-2525. Hey guys, it's David Hill here with one more sale path to mastery. And as always, you know, we're bringing you the best of the best. And we got a special treat because we went out and we found somebody who is just an outstanding rock star, Pat Hyben. Guys, I'm sure a lot of you already know who he is. Been in the business real estate industry 28 years Uh, He went from selling his first year, 13 homes, guys, 13 homes to a business that was doing 5.2 million in GCI. Yeah, that's 5.2 million. Think about that. That's awesome. Pat also hosts a podcast called Pat Interviews Real Estate Rockstars, which I was honored to be interviewed by a few months back. Uh, Pat has a book, Six Steps to Seven Figures, and he's going to share those six steps with us in this interview. Um, he also has a really great training program. I'll let him talk more about that, but it's a, it's a great program for you listing specialists. And on the podcast, he'll give you a code to get $100 off if you want to take advantage of that training. Uh, so it's just a great interview, guys. We're, we're everywhere. I'm not kidding. We're everywhere. We're, we're talking about from, you know, from the basics of your first assistant to selling a team that's doing, you know, 500 units and still benefiting from it over 10 years later. So, I mean, Pat's just killing it. Definitely a guy you want to pay attention to, listen to, pick up his book, go check out his podcast and enjoy, my friends. Enjoy the interview. If you, if you love it, please, again, share. Give us your feedback and give us a review. You know, we love your reviews and it really helps our listenership. So guys, again, enjoy. Have a phenomenal rest of your day. Hey guys, it's David Hill here with one more sale, Path to Mastery. And as always, man, we are finding the top talent, the rock stars. And this week we are nothing short of brilliance. We are with Pat Hyben and Pat is out of the Maryland area Pat is a 20-year real estate veteran. Uh, He's not selling real estate anymore, but yet he's still reaping the benefits from from a real estate team that he sold years ago. He'll talk to us about. He's an author of an awesome book called Six Steps to Seven Figures. Uh, I know he's he's part of a a really cool mastermind. He's got a lot of really awesome things going, going on. So I just honored to really have Pat with us today. Hey, what's going on, Pat? David, hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely, man. Like I said, it's an honor. I've been wanting to pick your brain for a while, so thank you. Before we get started, though, please fill in some of the gaps for our listeners. I mean, who are you? How'd you get started? Uh, you know, tell, tell us about yourself. Okay, so basically, I got into real estate at 21 years old. I, I did go to college. I averaged to below average in school. You know, I graduated college with a 2.6 with a degree in sociology had real no idea what I wanted to do. I found that the path to government work took a long time. I couldn't even get a job as a as a guidance counselor or a probation officer, anything that I thought I could do with sociology. I basically took a job selling real estate and it was not, and I'll repeat this, was not by design. It wasn't, it was just kind of like I needed money. Uh, I knew that commissions were big bigger than friends of mine that were selling Xerox machines and phone systems and other office stuff, making two, $300 a sale. And I had seen that you could sell a house and make, you know, 3000 rather than 300 a sale or 30 a sale. And some of these guys I went to college with were selling things and making smaller commissions like that. So anyway, so that was really the logic behind it, you know? And then, so I said, okay, well, let's try this out. And uh, first year, I sold 10 houses, 
made 13,000 bucks. And then from there, it just kind of went up and up and up. Best year ever. We did um, 5.2 GCI, 1.5 net uh, income, um, 508 houses sold, uh, $203 million in volume. So, um, you you know, we did that for a couple of years. Um, Then in 2010, I wanted out. So I got my partner, Mike Sloan, who had been with me at the time, uh, like eight years, seven or eight years. And uh, him and I worked out a deal. And I got out of the business, wrote the book, went on book tour. And now I have my own podcast radio show, uh, Pat Hyman Interviews Real Estate Rockstars. And I have a new company called Rebus University, which is a an online learning platform for real estate agents and for salespeople to learn how to essentially crack the code, the things that they might not necessarily talk about uh, in uh, in a class that your broker is teaching or in a class that your board of realtors is teaching. I'm trying to teach that uh, online. So, uh, so that's it in a nutshell. Hope that wasn't too long. No, that was great. So we appreciate that. Now we get we know you a little bit better. So first thing I want to talk about, I mean, so you told me, you know, you said your first year in the business, you sold 10 homes and then uh, all of a sudden you sold your team. How, how many years later was it? Was that 18 years later in the business? No, it was beyond 20. I would I'd say so. This is 28th year and this was about 22 years in. 22 years. Awesome. And, and you were, you sounds like you did, um, I think you said five was it five million in, in GCI or five yeah. five million in yeah, yeah. okay five million in GCI yeah so I mean those are those are tremendous numbers so you know so I mean think of you know somebody that's maybe uh, newer in the business or even somebody that's been in the business for a couple of years when when you think about okay I went from you know my first year doing X to ridiculously high numbers looking back now what what would you say would be the one thing that you would tell someone someone says okay I want to get to that place you know. What would you say to somebody? You know, I think that um, there's this misconception nowadays that there's all this free lunch out there, you know, that you're going to make money no matter what, that everything you touch is going to turn to gold and that everything is easy. And I think that um, going into this, knowing that that's not the case, going into this, knowing that it may be simple, but it's not easy, right? Right. It may be as simple as, you know, busting your ass and and working hard and focusing. Yeah, that's simple, but that's not easy. So I would say that's what I did. You know, from day one, I treated it as a job. That first year in the business, my first full-time year in the business, I probably worked harder than the majority of the agents in my office, if not all of them. Even though I only sold 10 houses and the top agent might have sold 35, you know, I probably worked harder. And why, and why was that? Was it because you were focused on the wrong things um, or you were just trying to learn the business? Why, why would you say you worked hard? Yeah, it was, you know, yeah, it was a growing curve, you know. Uh, also, Sorry. I was working a lot of buyers, you know. I didn't understand listings. It wasn't until about my third year in when I took Floyd Wickman's uh, Sweat Hogs course that I learned that I needed to be a listing agent. And uh, I remember that I, I made, I think I'm, I told you I made 13 grand my first year, 27 my second year, third year I made 87. And uh, so I almost tripled it my third year. And it was only because of one thing. And that was because I started just focusing on listings. I just decided, okay, I'm going to be a listing agent. I just still took buyers, don't get me wrong, but I, I didn't use them as a crutch. I knew that I could just get listings. And what happened was I started taking listings in a much higher price range than I was getting buyers. Hmm. Uh, So I started getting fatter commissions uh, just because I was going after listings rather than buyers. Hmm. And then don't the buyers show up too, Pat? I mean, when you start taking these listings, then all of a sudden you've got buyers calling on you. Yeah. Calling on your eight, nine hundred thousand dollars listings or whatever. Yeah, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Buyers are a byproduct of listings. Absolutely. So what, you know, if you were going to say, you know, to, to the guy that's listening, they've been in the business for whatever, three years, five years, eight years, makes no difference. And they're like, wow, I, I just, I can't even comprehend doing 5 million volume GCI. I mean, what would you say to that person? Like, what should he, follow? are you saying just listings or what else is, is what else would you tell that person? Yeah, that's great. Um, okay. So first of all, I think that, and, and this is just my opinion, and this is just what I did. Okay. I was always 
more apt to pay someone a salary than to give someone a deal. <clears throat> Not that I didn't have agents. I mean, at one time I had 17 buyer agents, but, um, but I still was always heavily staffed. I would always rather pay, like when I had listing agents, I had three listing agents. They each were getting 20% out of the commission and I would get 80%. And then I would have, you know, the rest of that 80% was used or some of it was used to, to pay somebody, to pay somebody who was a solid person to make sure that the customer was happy. Um, and I spent my whole career that way where I had, I was kind of always overstaffed and under agented. And I think now there's a lot of agents, uh, the opposite there. They have over agented for lack of a better word and understaffed. You know, let me stop you for a second, Pat. I want to. So you said you were paying this person. So what is this? Is this person like what is that? A client care manager? Who is this person? Yeah, David, it was. A, um, yeah, a client care manager, uh, you know, somebody who would, uh, you know, always pick up the phone on the first ring and someone who would always get the answer they needed. So is that is that and I, and I love that we're having this conversation because this is actually where where we are in my team right now. And I think this is the step where I'm sure a lot of people can relate. It's getting to that next level, breaking through that ceiling of, you know, being stuck at that, you know, 90, 100 transactions, client care manager. So what, what does that look like if you're willing to share that with us? Like, what does that person do? Well, um, I mean, I, mean um, I believe that the, if, let's just say you're, you know, it's just you, right? And, and I think that you really shouldn't have an assistant until you're doing three to four deals a month, right? Thir- the 35 to 40 houses a year. Um, the person that you get first is a right hand person. It's an executive assistant, right? Someone who can spit nails, right? Someone who is, who is really solid, like can answer your phone and be you and not frustrate the person that they couldn't get the answer they wanted. Like, like, um, mm. you know, if they don't know the answer, they, they tell them I'm going to call them right back. They get the answer within a couple of minutes and they call them right back. You know, someone who's going to make the, everybody that calls in happy, and that would just be your right hand man, your executive assistant, right? Then the second hire would be a courier, and, and the first person is this way too. But both people would not be afraid to do any any sort of work. Meaning, if it said, "Hey, you know, I had an open house and I didn't have time to pick up the signs," they go pick up the signs. If they had to, you know, go out to a farm and deliver some documents and truck through the mud to get to it, then that's what they got to do, right? I mean, that's the type of person you want. But the second person would be a courier, someone who's out on the road delivering stuff, picking stuff up, putting up signs, lock boxes, virtual tours, photographs, all that crap that's, uh, you know, really not dollar productive, really not going to make you any more money. And they will probably end up doing a better job than you when it comes down to it, doing the job that they do, which is, you know, taking pictures or whatever. Sure. 10, 12, maybe $15 an hour work, right? Maybe $20 an hour. Yep. Absolutely. So basically you're saying it's leverage, right? I mean, in, in a nutshell, you got leverage for yourself right out of the gate. You didn't waste a lot of time. So what is the biggest challenge with other agents now when it, when it comes to that? Like, why aren't agents just doing that? Hmm. You know, I think that there's some ego involved in that. You know, they, they say, oh, you know, I see agents out there now, David, you know, they, they're, they're selling... 14 houses a year and they have two buyer agents, you know, and I'm like, what are you doing? You know, you got to do it yourself first to, to gain the respect. I think then, you know, to have other people do it for the most part. And it's also easier. It's easier to hire a buyer agent, right? Cause you're going to pay them anything. And if they don't sell, of course it's their fault, not your fault. Where what happens if you hire a salary person, all of a sudden it's massive accountability, right? You have to keep them busy. So you got to get out there and bust your ass. You got to get up and show up to work. You got to look busy while you're at work. (laughs) You know, you're on stage because they're watching you. You know, there's a lot of pressure there, you know, and and you don't want them thinking, oh, he's not going to be able to pay me this month because he didn't sell any houses. So that's right there. There lies even more pressure. So, do you, I mean, do you think it's a mindset issue yeah. with, with a lot of agents? I mean, yeah, and I just think, yeah, it's a mindset thing, you know. I mean, here's the thing. I had a friend of mine that owns a liquor store. He's got like 15 employees or whatever, let's say, you know, part-time, full-time, whatever. And I remember him saying to me one day, he said, doesn't it ever scare you that you, you know, have a real estate team 
and you got to worry about them. And, you know, rather than just doing it all yourself, like a lot of real estate agents do. And I said, well, what's the difference between me and you, right? You got a liquor store. You got 15 people. I got a real estate team. I got 15 people. What's the difference? He was dumbfounded. And I was dumbfounded that he was dumbfounded because I thought in my head, why would he think any different, you know? Mm. But it's true. It's like, why would he think any different? I think it's just because it's people don't expect that, or at least they didn't. You know, now it's now it's much more tricky. Now everybody has a team. Well, it's it's a lot more common, that's for sure. And certainly from Keller Williams uh, starting that model, I think the shiny object is everybody wants a team, but I don't know that everybody's fit to to run a team. And I want to shift gears a little bit now. With I know you still. Um, you're not out in obviously the trenches selling real estate anymore, but you still have a, a real estate team. Is that is that correct? Yeah. So 2000, you know, we were kicking ass. We we're making lots of money. Everything we touched turned to gold. I had a title company, had a mortgage company, uh, had my own independent real estate office. We were making lots of money. 2008 came around. I remember we went from an average of 41 settlements, and I wrote about this in my book. The exact numbers in my book, but I think it's. 41 settlements to like 16. So like our expenses were set up that if we sold 41 houses, we would make nice profit, right? Um, but as soon as you drop down to like 35, you come to break even. And as soon as you drop below 35, you come to losing money. And so we dropped well below that like over a period of a year, right? Just like all of a sudden, right? The market just stopped. Like what stopped was the number of transactions. It used to be so many transactions that you could reach out there and grab. And then all of a sudden, the number of transactions uh, became a third, 33% of what it once was. And so you couldn't reach out there and get uh, the same amount of transactions that you could reach out and get before. So anyways, make a long story short, we spent a couple of years crawling back from that. I fired 22 people one year. I had a bunch of agents leave and go to competitors and things like that. It was a very disheartening couple of years. 2010, I finished writing my book, and I said, I really want to just go on book tour. I want to be an author. You know, I don't want to want to do this crap anymore. It's been 22 years. You know, a lot of my top people left. One guy that was – I had two people left that were, uh, you know, have been with me a long time, Mike and Janice, uh, two loyalist uh, people I've had. And uh, they were both with me and I sat them down and said, you know, who wants to take this over because I'm done with it. Janice, she was older. She was looking at retiring a couple of years anyway. She goes, I don't, I don't want anything to do with it, but let, let Mike run with it. So Mike um, – I ran with it. I worked at a deal. Basically, he bought the, the, the company. At that time, we really weren't making much money. And uh, he bought it for the book value, which simply means you, basically the way I figured out book value is I just, just took what was in the account and cut it in half. And that's 50% of the book value. So I had him give me 50% of the book value, uh, half of what we had in our operating account. I took out the other half uh, as my profit for selling it. He got a 50% ownership in the company. And then um, I took 10% off the top of any agents that were there as of that date. Any commissions that came in as of that date from agents, uh, I get 10%. Still to this day, people like Janice or anybody else that uh, you know has been with us since then, I get 10%. And then anybody new who came in, we both get 10%. So we take 20% off the top of anybody that's come in since the merger or since he bought it. Um, I get 10, he gets 10. Uh, he's on a 70-30 split, so he's on a high split with buyers and sellers, so he still likes to work a lot of the buyers and sellers. That's what he likes to do. And then anything that's left um, after the 10% have been paid and uh, his split has been paid on his, uh, we split 50-50. Uh, so we get a profit loss every month, look at it, and um, if we don't make a decision, we each take five grand out of the kitty. Uh, if we do make a decision, we might make a decision. Hey, let's take ten grand each, or let's take twelve grand each, or whatever. Depends on the month, um, or, or some months we might say let's not even take the five. But no, nonetheless, we, you know, our goal is to try to maximize what we take out every month, um, and that's it. And that's how we run the business. It's been very successful for both him and me. He's brought it back to uh, over three hundred units. I think we got down to like one hundred and thirty-five units. Now, last year he did three hundred and six units. I think. 
uh, we had a couple REO accounts. He's, he was able to maintain those REO accounts, picked up some new ones, um, got a couple of agents, uh, got a staff of five, and it's going good. And, and he's happy and I'm happy. So Good stuff, man. Good stuff. So I, I guess that's the goal for any of our, our us team owners is, is eventually having that team where you're, you're very rarely at, at all involved in it, but yet you're still benefiting and reaping some rewards, right? That's, that's the, uh, the, it's very hard. It's very hard to sell a team. Like a lot of people have this vision and, and, and it may happen. I don't want to say it's impossible because someone will do it. Okay. But I think it's not as easy as everybody thinks. Everybody oh, thinks they're going to have this team and they're going to sell it someday for a million bucks. But at the end of the day, most agents unfortunately are broke. Even the, the top mega agents that you think are, you know, billionaires are, are broke if you pull the curtain behind them and they can't afford to write you a check for seven figures. So, you know, if you can get a couple of years of referral fee out of it, that's awesome. If you can get, you know, more than that, that's incredibly awesome. And I've so far, I've gotten six years of income from it and, you know, we're going strong and, and, you know, I, we'll trade, e we'll, we'll send emails throughout the week. Um, I have another house. I live in South Carolina and in Maryland. I have two houses. So I go back and forth. My wife and I go back and forth between the two states. You know, everything's done via email. He runs everything, but we still communicate. We'll talk on the phone once every two weeks or so. If I'm in town in Maryland, like today, I'm talking to you in the real estate office. So I'll come in here and, you know, help boost morale and talk to everybody and be involved and stuff like that. But I'm very liberated from it. It's not my company anymore. I don't talk to any clients. I don't participate in any marketing. I think that's how most agents stay attached is through marketing and through clients, right? If there's a mad client, they're never going to get me. I don't talk to any clients. And I'm I'm living. I'm getting I'm getting ready to leave for Vietnam for two weeks. I just got back from Jamaica two days ago. Um, you know, so I'm I'm tough life, brother. Tough life. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I paid for it. You are listening to one more sale. Let's switch gears a little bit. Let's switch gears, and I want to talk a little bit, little bit about your book because I know we're you know we we got about ten minutes left. Um, love to talk about your book, Six Steps to seven figures what tell us what the essence uh, of the book is pat yeah so a couple of years before the the transition of uh to mike i uh, had a friend who developed kidney cancer and he he died really fast like three weeks like it was really short like unexpected he was a football coach at a high school i went to his funeral and i saw a mass amount of eulogies like a lot like most funerals you go to maybe two eulogies right they were just eulogy after eulogy, and they were all his kids that he coached. And these are all teachers and lawyers and doctors and dentists and everything now. But they're standing up there saying, you know, Coach Ken taught me this. Coach Ken taught me that. He taught me this. He taught me that. And uh, I was really impressed that this guy had created so many mentees and been a mentor to so many people. And I realized that, you know, I've gained so much from the real estate industry. I had so many mentors myself. Uh, very little mentees. And so it was because of that that I decided to write the book. And I just basically put my heart and soul in it. Uh, Jay Papazan and Gary Keller helped me with it. Gary wrote the foreword. Jay coached me through a lot of the writing processes. I put my heart and soul into it. It was a 350-page book basically about my life in real estate, how I went from 10 sales to 500 sales. And, th and then I was given the advice I needed to make it more of a shorter, like an airplane read, a read that, you know, you're getting on a, a, a flight from Boston to California, you want to be able to finish it. So I dropped it down to 200 pages and, and we got it down to six simple steps that I find that every single successful real estate agent in the world, I know of no one that doesn't follow these six simple steps. So give us those six steps. The first step is, is goal setting, set goals and affirm the goals, right? which I've done for years. And I give copies of my goals in the book, uh, ones that actually came true for me even back 25 years ago. And then the second step is track. You know, it's, it's everybody's uh, what they used to use or many still do the whiteboards, the track. Now they got these digital boards that show up on television that you, you can track your team numbers and your numbers. Uh, there's tons of tracking that can be done. So we dive deep into that. 
The next one is uh, having mentors and masterminds, uh, which are just, you know, you, groups of people or people that you uh, learn from them rather than you learning by getting your head kicked in and uh, sharing best practices and things like that. The next is act, which is nothing great comes without sacrifice. You know, if you want to do something, you got to, I went on book tour for seven months. I did 53 cities in seven months, busted my ass speaking, and I was able to sell, you know, almost 11,000 books the first week the the book came out. So I wouldn't have been able to do that without traveling the country, uh, you know, working. The fifth step is build. And I talk a lot about build. This is a lot of people's favorite chapter, which is, you know, uh, I, one of my mentors told me early on, build from a success up, not from the ground up. And what that means is if you have a house in the Waverly neighborhood that you sold, don't go out to the Amberley neighborhood and try to solicit new listings by door knocking, go to Waverly because there you have a success up. It's a lot easier to build for a success up. You could say, I'm the agent that sold the house across the street or I'm the agent that sold down the street. You're much more apt to succeed if you can build from a success up. If you have a unfair advantage, you know, because you sold one in the neighborhood or because you're a teacher or you used to be a teacher and you just start marketing to all the teachers, right? That's a success up or an unfair advantage. So that's what build talks about. And then, uh, the last step in, you know, the most important is invest. You know, I believe that most agents, um, live lies that they, you know, look good on the outside, but when you, sh you look at them naked and you look at their bank account, it's, it's sparse. You look at their credit score, it's crappy. You look at you know, whether they've paid their taxes on time and it's tarnished. And so I've always been a, a good saver and I've always used my savings wisely and invested. And I, you know, give some examples and talk about that. And so that's the six steps. And then it kind of wraps it all up. Love it. Love it, my friend. You know, I can really relate to the build right now because, uh, you know, I just recently bought a house in a in a new area. And it was interesting because I there was an expired right down the road. And I basically said, hey, I, I just want to let you know, I just moved into the neighborhood. I'm new to the neighborhood. I've a very successful real estate team and and I'm just committed to, you know, making things happen. And the guy was just super excited about all that. You know what I mean? So um, I have a meeting with him on Friday. And um, yeah, and it was a lot easier for you, conversation for you too, right? It was much warmer. Well, we had that commonality. Yeah, because we live in the same neighborhood as well. So that made it different. That would be a success up. Yeah. You know, that, that would help you. Absolutely. So uh, kind of in closing, Pat, what's right now? What's your biggest challenge? Yeah, um, I've come out with this uh, new university. It's called Rebus University. Uh, we're working on our second product, which is a team building course with Jeff Cohn, who's the number one Berkshire Hathaway agent out of Omaha, Nebraska. I'll sell like 750 houses this year. Uh, we're going to be selling that. It's a how to build a team. And, and the product we have out now is a certified listing agent course, which is, you know, I interviewed eight agents from around the country, all the top agents from around the country and film their listing appointment. Mm -hmm. I basically filmed it and then we talked about it. Then we created a course and we created uh, 10 minute increments on this course of listing appointments. There's about 10 hours of video. There is uh, 52 quizzes. And then when you finish, you get certified and you get a certificate and you uh, get the CLA designation. And it's a tough course, but once you take it, and you complete it and you get an 80% or better on it, uh, you're so much more confident and so much more apt to win a listing than if you didn't uh, obviously go on the course. And uh, uh, anyone could get it it's at rebusuniversity.com. I'll give everybody a $100 off coupon that's listening. You can just type in Rockstar 100, Rockstar 100, numeric 100. So Rockstar 100, get 100 bucks off. And that's it, man. That's my biggest challenge is, is selling those. We, we have over 100-some students. We've had 10 graduates already, and it, it's going great. I'm also looking for affiliates, uh, people like yourself and other people with lists of agents that want to help me uh, sell it, and I'll pay you a commission. And uh, if you're interested, you could simply email me, pat at hyben, H-I-B-A-N dot com. That's pat at hyben dot com. Love it, my friend. And we will definitely talk about that offline. And I also want to know, I mean, you've done, achieved massively successful things in a lot of different areas. 
So when when things aren't going good or, or you're, there's you know something doesn't work for Pat Hyman or you know you maybe you just get get smashed by something. How do you deal with that, man? How do you keep moving you forward? Know, I mean, I like to answer questions direct. You know, with not a bunch of cliches. So I'm not going to give you any cliches. You know, my answer would be get outside, get in the sunlight. You know, outdoors helps, and it would also be exercise wear yourself out. You don't want to go to bed where you're wound up. You want to be completely exhausted. So, you know, that's, that would be my direct advice. Love it, my friend. Love it. Any, uh, any book recommendations for our listeners? You know, besides six steps to seven figures cool. and the sales playbook. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you um, yeah. Let's see. What did I just finish? I just finished reading, um, the surrender experiment by Mickey Cohen or Mickey, somebody like that. It was about this earth hippie type dude who uh, just decided to uh, say yes to everything essentially. And uh, uh, what happened with it is he ended up building this incredibly huge company with thousands of employees. And so it's, it's the story of that. And it's called the surrender experiment. It's about surrendering, not having to be in control of everything at all times. I think we all suffer from that, myself included. So it's interesting to go around now thinking about that, thinking about, I don't know if I agree with him 100%, but I do agree with him in some aspects of some things are not worth even responding to. So Mm -hmm. I've been much better about just letting things go and be like, you know, I just surrender to it. It's not, it's not a big deal. Yeah, I love that mindset. So in, in the final question, my friend Pat, and this is for every podcast, the, the final question is, what is the one thing that you want them to take from your interview on their path to sales mastery? What I would like people to do is focus on horizontal income. And I won't get into this too deep, but you know, there's two types of income. There's vertical income and there's horizontal. Vertical income goes up, meaning you do 10 sales a year, then you do 15, then you do 20. That's vertical. It's just going up 5,000 more one year, 10,000 more the next year. It's just vertical. And you're always pushing that. Uh, And you essentially don't get anything horizontal, which is where you get paid for free for not working, mailbox money, call it, some people call it, uh, until you retire, until you get a pension or social security. That's horizontal. But most people don't get horizontal income until the 65 or so. And I believed early on that I should start creating horizontal income at an early age. And I started buying real estate and real estate's horizontal income. If, if Even if I make $100 on a house for rent over and above the mortgage or whatever, that's 100 bucks horizontal. And I, currently I have 57 horizontal lines uh, that pay me every month. And uh, that's one of the ways I was able to you know, get out of the real estate game, get out of the sales game is to create horizontal lines. Uh, You know, my Rebus University is a horizontal line, right? I've done, that's been created. Now, every time someone buys it, I get paid horizontally. My book is a horizontal line. I've loaned money to people and their payments are horizontal lines. I've invested in other small companies and my dividends from those companies are horizontal lines. So I have 57 of them. So my, my advice would be start early creating horizontal lines uh, because especially as real estate agents, we don't get very many. And when we do get them, we're, we're really old anyway. So <laughs> start creating them now. All right, my friend, how do we get in touch with you? You know, just go to patheiben.com. Uh, that's the easiest way. And that, that will kind of send you in various directions on all my different websites. This is One More Sale. If you love podcasts, I'm certain you're going to love audiobooks. And audible.com is the world's largest platform of audiobooks. If you're interested in checking out the book we talked about today for free in audio, just go to davidsfreebook.com. Yes, again, davidsfreebook.com will get you a free 30-day trial on Audible. And don't forget to check out our sponsors, Direct Mortgage Loans, at www directmortgageloans.com or feel free to give them a call 888-604-2525 and don't forget to mention Path to Mastery You are listening to One More Sale with your host David I. Hill author of the Sales Playbook 
get your copy at www.thesalesplaybook.net.